to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Brittany Simon joins me on the show today. Over the last 15 years, Brittany's design career includes everything from large-scale commercial renovations to whole home makeovers to budget-friendly builds. With a bachelor's degree in business and interior design, her professional career began working for some of the top design firms in Arizona, where she specialized in kitchen and bath design as well as the entire construction process from construction Inception to completion. In 2010, she founded Brittany Simon Design House, a full-service design firm. Her work soon caught the attention of national media and helped launch Brittany into television and the media world. Today, we talk about her experience on the seventh season of the hit HGTV Design Challenge series, Design Star. She shares the lessons she learned from doing a TV design show, and she shares how she applied these lessons to her design firm. It can be a sort of be careful what you wish for experience, or as you will learn from Brittany, it can be something when handled well, you can parlay into some nice benefits for your interior design business. But like we say on the show here a lot, it always starts with why. What is your why for doing something? What results do you want to achieve? All right. Now, another why I might ask you is why haven't you started using article.com yet? <laughs> right? Or if you have opened your trade account, why haven't you placed an order yet? You know, they have the latest mid century style furniture for living rooms, dining rooms, offices, and outdoor spaces, and that their trade division is managed by interior designers who know exactly what your world is like. Who know there actually is a real thing as a furniture emergency. Am I right? Right? So go to welldesigned.article.com and see for yourself how awesome they are to work with. Now, a few more details about Brittany before you meet her. In addition to being a regular design contributor to television, digital, and print media outlets, she has also been the host for the Holiday House series on HGTV, a designer on the Travel Channel's hit series, Hotel Impossible, co-host of We're Moving In on the FYI Network, and as a featured designer on Bravo TV's new design show, Best Room Wins, which began airing last May 2019. So lots of cred under her belt and lots of experience to share with us on the show today. I'm excited for you to meet Brittany Simon. Hi, Brittany. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. So, Britt, I'm so glad that you're on the show. And before we go one second further, we're going to give a a huge shout out to our friend Jenny Slingerlin of Black Ink Interiors and Lexi Westergaard because these are your little design posse. And, of course, Jenny and I go back to the way beginning of the podcast, right? Yeah, and actually Jenny turned me on to your podcast, so we can definitely thank her for that too. Yes, and so what I have learned is just recently meeting all three of you in person together at Las Vegas Market is that you guys met each other at a design event or something and hit it off, and you just continue on a very informal basis supporting each other and just helping each other with clients and design dilemmas and just being moral support for colleagues in the same business, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it can be kind of a a lonely world out there on, on the creative side of things. So it's, it's so nice for us to get together and 
call each other when we're having a, a difficult time and uh, ha hitting a hurdle with a client that, you know, how do we handle this? How would you handle this? And having that support from one another. And then we keep each other accountable. We, we keep each other, you know, on task. We'll help each other if we can't find something. Like it's been such a, a, a blessing to have them over the last couple of years because it's really helped. I think we would all say that we've grown our businesses because of one another and for, you know, using each other's strengths to do that. It's so important to really just understand just what you said. It's you've got a strength that might be different from Lexi's. Lexi's got something that might be different from Jenny. And to just collaborate and share and, and help each other. And I just love when I meet women like yourselves that are actively doing this. And so I just wanted to give a shout out and have a little five minutes on that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but we're here to talk about, Brittany, you have extensive experience with doing uh, TV shows. And you have a very particular opinion on doing TV shows. You have great learning lessons from doing um, design TV shows and observations of them. Start us off. What is the, the, one of the first things that you want to say about this experience of having done four design TV shows in your career so far? Gosh, I think um, the question I get asked the most is like, how do I, how do I get onto a TV show or how did how did you get there? Because everybody has these like grandiose ideas of what having a design show looks like and what it could do for their career, which the reality is, is that no, we're not all a Joanna Gaines. Like many people, I've been on four shows. Most people don't know me <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. But, um, it, it's really how you want to parlay TV into, to your benefit. Um, because, it's not always going to be a Joanna Gaines. Like they're a very unique situation. Like the idea of TV and doing design of TV is sure is really exciting and, and it is exciting. It's super fun, but it's not something that's going to like answer all of your prayers on, you know, getting yourself into business and um, coming out with licensed lines and, and creating a product line and, and getting picked up for additional seasons. Like the reality of that happening is very slim. So mm. it's kind of like, I don't want to, you know, TV is fun, but I'm like giving you the real of like what it's really like either behind the scenes or, um, what, you know, what it can do for you, but it's up to you to, to create that. Okay. So walk us into it a little bit. So you are, it's, it's not what it looks like. It's not as glamorous as it looks like, right? Nothing ever is. Let's be serious. How many, how many, how many of you guys have said to me that you have friends and say, you're an interior designer. That must be so much fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> like just as a designer in the real world, let alone the TV world. Right. Right. I mean, listen, it's fun. Being a designer is great, but as designers would tell you, it's like, 20% design mm -hmm. and the rest is people management, you know, process management and billing and accounting and all the things. So right. that's much like what it is for TV, although it's, it's a lot on, it's, it's a lot more heightened. The stress is a lot, uh, is a lot bigger. Okay. You know, I never, I've never thought to ask any designer that's been on a TV show before, do you get paid for it? So that's the other kind of caveat to things is that, you don't make great money in TV unless you're in a, you know, a fifth season, a fifth season of a show wow. because there are so many new shows and really like that first season is more of like a test season. Like, let's see if this show's going to, you know, have wings and take off because they're, think about how many seasons of shows you've watched. You're like, that was cool. But then they never brought it back. Right. Um, so they don't invest the money into the talent and into what needs to happen in the very beginning. And that's what people don't understand is like the money. And I'm sure Joanna, if you ask Joanna this, like the money is not in the TV, like it's not in the actual you being hired as the talent. It's what, what comes of it. And it's obviously the ideal is what they've done, which is launch different brands, launch their license deals, create an entire empire, right? An, an empire. <laughs> an empire. It's not... Magnolia jelly. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of that, you know, it's that, um, where it can get you. It's not the TV. That's why they're not doing it anymore. It's mm -hmm. not the TV. That's it's, that gets the money. You know, it's not the money maker. Mm -hmm. It's what you can do with it. Right. Okay. So, so take us to 
No, you're, you know, look, you're a 15 year career interior designer. You have a, a, a design firm. You do real design. It's not like, hey, you know, fancy TV designer and that's all you do. So talk to us a little bit about wh- why and where, how did you put your toe in it? Is, does somebody just say, hey, Brittany, you're really pretty and you're smart and you're talented. Want to be in a TV show? <laughs> like, how does it happen? Because you're going to tell us some of the hard realities of it, but there are still colleagues listening that would think, I'd like to try it. You can't scare me out of it. Right. Right. I mean, so mine just was kind of one of those where I stumbled into it. So I was a big HGTV design star fan and it's still one of my favorite shows that I watched, but, um, I, I used to watch it. I watched it one last se- I think it was like season six. I had watched it and, a casting thing popped up and it said, Hey, do you want to be on the next design star? This is when, you know, people used to watch commercials. Um, <laughs> and so I happened to go online. I think I was like watching it later in the night. I think I had DVR'd it, which we all probably remember when we used to do that too. <laughs> um, and I just happened to go online, look it up. And the casting was in Vegas that weekend and I'm in Arizona. So it's a quick four and a half, five hour drive. Depends on how fast you drive. <laughs> and my husband was like, let's just go. Like I, we, you love this show. Every time you watch it, you light up, you talk about how you wish you could do that. And it's basically like a designer boot camp. You know, when you're watching it, you're like, it's challenges based on design. So it's like throwing you into to things to see how you can survive. And I was like, let's do it. So we drive there and it, it just kind of, it was the first audition and they had me come back, um, to do another audition after that one. And it just kind of, kept growing and it, I kept moving along in the process, not, not thinking it would ever work out. Like I was just on a total whim and I, I ended up being on the seventh season and it was the first time I was ever really doing like real design work with furniture and like doing what I wanted to do because my career before that was all based in the builder side of things. So, so. yeah, so you came to it from, having expertise and day-to-day experience with picking the flooring, the hardscapes, the cabinetry, the, you know, the hardware, all of that, but you weren't always taking and often taking a room to the other side with the furnishings and the upholstery and the textiles and the decorative accessories is what you're saying? Exactly. I had always, my focus, because I started in the industry in 05 when the, the market was just booming in Arizona and I, I started in the design center and I wouldn't change it now because I learned all the ins and outs of, you know, remodeling and and what you need to know about kitchen and bath design, but it was unfulfilling creatively for me. And I never got to see a project to the end. Mm. Like we don't get to leave the office. We don't get to to walk those jobs and, um, see it all come to life. And Mm. that was something I was missing. Um, and that was when I was on design star, that was the first time I was actually ever seeing something that I had envisioned come to life. And I was doing it with my hands too. So we're very on hand, you know, you're doing everything yourself on design star. So I was doing things I never thought I could do. Um, and I got to see it finish and in a very short amount of time, which is also really fulfilling. Okay. So tell us about some of the hindsight and the learning lessons that you got from being in a TV show, or maybe some of the cautionary things that you would say to somebody who said, I'm going to audition, or I just got a part. What, what, are, what do we want to say? I think people don't understand that the time constraints for a challenge. And if you are not, a, you know, someone that thrives in a stressful environment, like you can, it can take you down real fast. Mm. Um, and that's one of the the biggest things I could say is that if you're not someone that, you know, comes to rises to the challenge in a very stressful situation, then it's not, it's not for you. Um, and you, you have to be very self-sufficient because you think you've got, you know, you imagine you go on a TV show and you've got this like team behind you that's there to kind of bring your vision to life. And that's just not the case unless you're in that fifth season or plus where they've got the budget for your team to help you do that. You're on your own and it's up to you. Like they give you very little information and you've got to figure it out. So you've got to be very um, savvy with um, your resources and being resourceful and and figuring out what the heck you're going to do. 
because that you're left to your own devices. So make that make me help me understand what that means. So that when you say that you have to be self sufficient, that you don't have a team to help you bring it to life, what are we talking about? Are we talking about you? You're going to design a room and you have what a week to do it. And when you say you have to have your own resources, do you mean like finding the furniture? Like get mm-hmm. me get me all the way through that. What does that mean? So the best way to kind of explain it is that recently I was on Bravo's Best Room Wins and. That is, it was the first, it's the first season of that show. I don't know if it'll come back. I haven't heard anything, but it was filmed. We were there for, you know, a week and a half, but we filmed over four days and we had one day where we were not filming, where we had to source all of the finishes, all of the furniture and everything that was needed for the renovation to start the following day. And that... This is LA too. We're filming in LA. I'm not from LA. I'm in Arizona. So I had to figure out where I was going to shop, where, I mean, I, this is a new contractor I've been handed on. I've, we've never worked together. He's like, okay, let me know what you want to do in the space for your renovation. I'm like, where do I find trim work? Where do, you know, I guess there's always Home Depot, but you know, we're on a tight budget. Where do I go buy direct for furniture? Where do I go for wallpaper? That's you, in was, stock that you can decide on stock. Monday and have it right. on Tuesday. Right. I had one day and, you know, in L.A. everywhere you drive. It takes one five hours to, to get to the next 40, store. <laughs> it's 45 minutes easy from one to the other. I don't know where I'm at. I've been in L.A. a lot and I just I never know where I if I'm in West Hollywood, I couldn't tell you how far the valley was. Right. Like, I just don't know. And are you I'm actually at. like in your own rental car or do they yes. at least give you yes. somebody to drive so you can be no. working while you're driving? <laughs> No, I'm driving myself. So I had to find every single finish, every single piece of furniture. I had one day on foot to find it. Now, obviously I could stay up all night to, to work online, which I did. Um, but you're, you're left to figure it out. And that's part of the challenge. Like when it's a competition show, like they don't, they're not there to help you know, make sure that you're going to get it finished. Cause if you don't finish, that's great for them. That's great for TV. If we don't finish. Oh. Um, so let me ask you a couple questions. Cause I now want to know the practical side of it. Mm-hmm. Or do you have a credit card from the TV production company that, you know, if you find the perfect backsplash tile, you can just order it and say, deliver it to the set. Like, what is that actually like? So that, so that's, a, I'm glad you asked that. Cause that's a whole nother part that makes things more complicated is I don't have, they have, they have an art department that has has to buy everything for you. So you're not, you're driving around to all these places and they're not there with you to just hand over the card and pay for it. You have to put it on hold. You have to either call them, text them, tell them where you're at, what it is they need to come purchase and then leave to move on to the next one. So it's not even the efficiency. It has to be so tight that you have to be a highly organized person to even pull it off. And let because, me ask you another question. So, for instance, you have this one day, and you, you you said you have a week and a half there, and you have four days of filming, and one day of sourcing. Uh-huh. So, are you? Is there has there been two days or something before that where you've walked the space or gotten the floor plan or met with the 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 homeowner or whatever, like figured out the design? Like, is there one or two days where you're like? broad stroking your design mm. of course it's going to change if like this is the sort of cabinet i wanted but i can't get that in one day so the cabinet design changes the countertop design right so but where is that where is your the thought process and how how much time are you given for that so we are um so from the beginning like the day one like the, we're filming i'm meeting the homeowners so i'm seeing their space we're talking about like for my for instance, mine was master bedroom and like the entry to the master bedroom. So we're walking their space, talking about what's working, what's not working, what they'd like to see as far as the, the renovation and the furniture in their space. And that's like day one. That's all we did day one. Well, at that point in time, I still don't know what my genre is because the the point of the show was also everybody had a different genre, like one Mm. episode's contemporary, another one's modern, another one's mid-century. I didn't know what my genre was. And we also were to walk a inspiration home. And within that inspiration home is what we're supposed to talk about with our homeowners. Like what, what is in that inspiration home that they'd like to bring into their space. And that didn't happen until the following day. 
And so then we did that the following day. And then that following day after that is the only day I had to shop. So there wasn't there, it wasn't like you knew what you were walking into and you had two days to like process and think of ideas. Like you have to go, it's a gut. You have to go with your gut instinct on every single item. Like there's no, um, I, maybe this will work. Let me see what else I can find. Like you have to, but you like have to it or leave it. Yeah, yeah. Like it, leave it. That's it. And, yes. No. And I mean, to a certain extent, sure. You overbuy. Like I remember they were really worried cause I had over purchased on a handful of things, but I'm like, listen, this is, don't worry. Things, things will get returned, but I'm like, I need to have things on hand in case, in case of something. And so mm. that also teaches you to kind of be five steps ahead, mm. which to really, you know, to be profitable and to have a successful business as a, as a, as a designer, you've got to be five steps ahead mm. of any sort of issue and think through things as if you don't have another option, right. you know, yeah. um, like with window covering. So you don't, you got to think about where, where's that rod going to hang? Right. Is there something in the way? Is there a soffit there? You know, how far does that hang from the ceiling? Well, my drape, my drape length, like you have to be mindful of all of those things because when you're doing draperies in a day, <laughs> Are they custom made or are you just buying them out of package from one of the, like, you know, the, one of the stores? So I, we were, our episode was sponsored by JC Penney's. So thank God I was able to get draperies from JC Penney's, but I dropped them off at a dry cleaner and had them hemmed and had them add drapery hooks. Oh. So, but you've got to, you know, you've got think to know about that. You need to know to, to do that. that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very enlightening, um, challenging experience that, you know, you feel like you've run a marathon when you're done. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is, it is really fulfilling when you do accomplish it because it's been so challenging. Mm. You know, it's kind of like when you've got in design, you've got that crazy client that's having you jump through hoops, running through, you know, running around like a crazy person. And then you end up in a really great spot and it's finished. Well, it's like the most rewarding thing to just be completed and move on. That's what it's like, mm. but it's, but it's not for the faint of heart. It's, it's well, and I can see that I can see that, you know, you can think all day long that you'd love to be on a design TV show. But the reality is, is this is a lot of pressure. And you, you can't just call them up and say, I'm going to need another day. Like I have to mull this design until I get an inspiration here. Right? Yeah. And it it really makes you um, understand the full process and like what you know, it makes you kind of jump in and get your hands dirty too, because you don't really like on design star, you don't have the option. Like your challenge is done. If you're, you don't finish, you're eliminated. So I, you know, I learned to do carpentry work. Like I've had to jump in and finish installing baseboards and case moldings and, and trim work. And I've had to jump in and finish building a piece of furniture. Like you realize, like you've got to know how every single thing works so that you can jump in and get your hands dirty in order to accomplish something in a short amount of time. And so, Brittany, what do you think? I'm going to get to the lessons that you learned in it that inform your interior design business. But I first want to take a step back to having gone through the process, how do you... Do you look? You the very first time you went through the process of of interviewing and going on the casting call. Maybe you didn't cognitively take notice of it, but after you've done it these other times, you must be aware in the casting process of where they are looking to see if you're the one that's going to just end up in a puddle of tears and really just not. I mean, I know to your sense, to some sense, they want the drama of the failure, but they also don't want the t- complete, like, I can't do it. I quit. Right. Oh, like, no, they love right. that. They want that. <laughs> really? Like, and that, like, and, that's it. That, that design challenge is like that designer is done. And the other one just goes to the finish line and there's yes. that numb nuts in the puddle of mud. Yes. Oh. And that's the hard. That See, I don't the watch them. So yeah, I don't that's know. the hardest part about the competition is they, it's, it's more powerful and more exciting for them if you crumble. Where it, that's gross that's, though. That's so gross. I know. And that's where, <laughs> and that's where it's, you know, it's not, you, you imagine like they've got your back, you know, they're going to help you, but they, unless you're in a, you're the host or you're the co-host and it's, it, it the show is contingent upon you finishing they they want, they leave you to your own, you know, to figure it out on your own. So and, they're perfectly fine if 
the, I see. I was thinking that they were doing some sort of testing, uh, uh, you know, some some sort in the process that says, look, okay, this person is going to be stressed beyond normal limits, but we want somebody that can. We have an assumption that could relatively handle it. Sort of like interviewing for like a CIA agent, right? It's like, yeah, you know. But you're saying no. They'll take you if you're crazy pants, and they expect you to fall apart. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, for a design star, I do absolutely think that they made sure to have a you know, the 11 of us, that there was a good mix of people that could handle the pressure, people that were strong-minded, others that were maybe, you know, a little bit of a wild card that were super passionate, but may not handle stress well. Like, sure, they they made sure that the 11 of us were a good mix of personalities. Okay. Um, But I do think during the filming that I was one they never thought would get to the end. Mm. Um, I do think that there were certain challenges thrown my way, and I they were surprised that I found a way to overcome them. Um, but I do think that they have a, a, they have a pretty good idea of who's probably going to make it in the top four. Okay. Um, and Mikkel, you, you've interviewed Mikkel. Yes. Mikkel, I Mikkel and I are good friends. We were on the same season of design star together and we were in the top four together. Oh. Um, and we were, you know, we were the, were the figure it out people. And like, right. Mikel is a hustler. Like he's Mikkel scrappy. Is, that kid oh, is scrappy. scrappy. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> and, that's, and that's exactly the personality you need for TV. There's a reason why the both of us are still doing TV. I think we're the only two that are still in from our season doing TV um, still because you're, it takes a scrappy person. It takes a resourceful, scrappy person. Right. I mean, Mikel Smart. rented a car, <laughs> rented a car every week and drove to set when I think he went to, when he was in LA, like he didn't actually have a car. I remember that from his podcast. And I was like, Oh my God, I didn't realize what a hustler you actually yes. were. I mean, uh, just so creatively thinking out of the box. The, yeah. He must've shared on his episode, a half a dozen things that he did to just propel the success of his business that were just so out of the box thinking. Yeah. I mean, he is like, he's a, he'll figure it out yes. and he's going to get to be, he's getting where he wants to go, whether you like it or not. He's so sweet too. I mean, he's oh, just, he's I just best. saw him in Vegas too. He's mm-hmm. so sweet. Yeah. He's okay. So, so, so the thing is that, and it's funny because when you said that they threw a couple of things at you that you think that they surprised that you were able to overcome, I kind of remember in Ann Rue's episode too, because she talked about being um, on Design Star also, mm-hmm. correct? Right. Mm-hmm. And yep. I I feel like I, I I don't remember it exactly, but I sort of feel like I recall her saying, you know, they set up scenarios where they tell you a partial truth, not mm-hmm. the whole truth, and let your imagination, you know, and they want to sort of pit you in a dramatic thing and think if you will stir the pot, cause trouble, go off the deep end. I just put all words in the mouth that did not happen in the episode. I'm recalling what I remembered (laughs) of the feeling of it. So is that what you're saying? Like during the course of that week, the producers or whoever is tasked with it will specifically do something calculated that is designed to put you off your rails? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, that's certainly the way they will, they will never admit that to you. Right. Right. (laughs) But you like that's weird like you know why how come my fabric didn't show up like that's strange everybody else's fabric showed up but mine's not here Uh. and they're you know and they say like oh those are just things that those are acts of god we don't know why that's not here and you're like well that's strange because you all picked them up and brought it here in a set (laughs) and so (laughs) things like that where you're like okay so now you want me to figure out like how am I gonna not be judged for missing window treatments or missing fabric like what am I gonna come up with and so and there's, it isn't there's... simply let's call the fabric company and get a messenger to go get it. That's not a pa- that's not a possibility, or that well, could be the possibility. Know, it could be. I mean, we don't have cars, so it also is. You know, it's dependent upon like art department going to pick it up. What, this is on Design Star, so you know it, it depends. But a lot of times it was you know me calling in a favor, me coming up with a plan. Like, how about I call this person and see if they'll just drive it to me? And I mean, I remember I convinced someone from a retail store, and I told them I would pay the money out of my budget to drive it to me. And it's like, I don't think they ever thought I would call and ask somebody to do that. Right. Uh, so you can right. get it done however you want to get it done. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Love it. Love it. And that's kind of, you know, that's one of those things that you realize what, what you're capable of. Mm. 
Okay. And so now let's switch it to the the lessons and the insights that you learned about yourself as a designer, as a business owner that you carry to your interior design firm. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the overall is that I run a, a pretty tight ship, you could say. And that that being that I, you know, when my clients see a proposal, it's itemized with every single item. We're very clear about what it is we're getting. And it's everything is thought through from, you know, A to Z. And that's so that I know there will be no mistakes on on install day. We will have, you know, backup options for certain things if we aren't positive that they're gonna fit. You know, I have things on standby versus me being on on site for install day and then being like, you know, this isn't going to fit. Like I have an answer to those questions so that I'm never in a situation where I have to tell the homeowner like, yeah, this isn't working or this doesn't fit. And uh, you know, I'll have to get back to you on what we're going to do about that. Like that's just not an option on how I operate. It's- so what do you mean by that? Give me an mm-hmm. example. You probably have something in your mind that recently <laughs> that has happened. I can't imagine what you could possibly, because I read your website, you are, your furniture, is, and it did say trade sourcing for furniture. Is that uh, across the board or, or only when you're doing the turnkey? What, 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 tell me about that. So what I mean is that, you know, there's a lot of designers that buy furniture and they get it to site on site and something doesn't fit or they want to play with the options. You know, they want to play with multiple different chairs or see how they feel about it on, on site. And that's how some designers operate. And that's just not how, like we know what chair, what sofa, what everything's going to be in that space. Like we're not playing with things on site. Okay. <clears throat> and, okay. And, so it's not that you, you have made a decision on a particular sofa and chair, but you've got another one sitting in the wings in case you don't like it when it's there. And, and are you saying, Brittany, that that ability on your part to be clear and definitive is, was what helped you in the TV shows? Or is there a, where you're saying, look, I had to make decisions in flat real time and that has translated and helped me back in my design business, chicken or egg, right? Yeah, I think the TV stuff, the TV work has really pushed me into knowing to trust my gut. Like mm. you, make a, you make a gut instinct and, and you stick to it because nine times out of 10, I'll tell you, you'll go back to that first <laughs> choice. It's true, it's so true. And so you don't have the time when you're doing TV to really sit and and ponder what you're going to do and which option you're going to pick. You've got to pick one and you have to move forward. And that's it helps with the efficiency now in my design work that, you know, I have to I come up with what I want to see in that space before I go looking like I don't go sourcing just willy nilly. I think is what the word is that what you use all the time. (laughs) I don't go, you know, the word from the first century BC, (laughs) Um, you know, I've got a plan. I've got a plan of attack before I even start. And that helps with efficiency on, on design time. Um, It helps with me being clear on what I'm looking for, you know, who, what resources I'm going to. And that, uh, that process has really been developed from, my start in TV. I love and that. Really, and really kind of figuring out, you know, I, and I tell my assistant too, I'm like, you can't just spend three hours like perusing all of our trade sources online. Like you have to have an idea, like, you know what? I think a, a, a Lucite table would look awesome in this space. Then go on and see what vendors have a Lucite table. Like don't just be perusing all of the coffee tables that one could, could see in a day. Like that's right. just not a great use of time. Right. Um, and that's, that's what, you learn from having a short amount of time. It's like, we're always just trying to be as efficient as possible. Okay. So I love that. I love that. So you just get accustomed to being in situations where you have to make quick, decisive actions and you're listening to your gut. So you're not just throwing a dart at the wall. You're saying, Mm -hmm. my gut tells me it's a Lucite table. And what you've learned is that by executing it through television, that it works, that you were Mm -hmm. right. And so you just say, okay, universe, I trust my gut now. So let's not putz around. I love it. Yeah. I mean, and like, there is no perfect, you know, for certain things, like there's a great, well curated space, but you know, that well curated space could still be achieved with 10 different coffee tables, right? you know? So at some point you have to really be confident in your decision-making and move forward. And, and that helps with, you know, client feeling like you're using the best 
you know, of your time and you're being efficient and they feel confident that, you know, you're not spending hours looking for something and where you could have, you know, spent 5,000 on a coffee table instead of a 10 hours of design time in a thousand dollar coffee table, you know? Right, right, uh, right. So it's really kind of being mindful of all of it as a whole. And, and that's, we do a lot of custom pieces for that reason. So instead of us spending, you know, 10 hours looking for that perfect credenza, like I'll envision something, I'll draw it up and we'll have it made. And it'll be a nicer piece of furniture and we've got the budget for it because I didn't spend the time to look for it. Okay. Okay. So those are, are, those are valuable thoughts, I guess is what I want to say. Like that thought process is, you know, that next level in your business where you're just stepping into understanding that confidence is, you know, half of it. Talent is, you know, another, you know, three, you know, whatever of, you know, I'm going to try and do math now. Here we go. Right. (laughs) You know, it's all mixed up. Right. So it's, it's your talent, it's your confidence. And then it's just go, you know, your gut listening to your gut. What other things do you think were lessons that you either observed and said, Hey, now having done this process, I know that was one of my strengths or how about the other? Were there things where you're like, whoa, this process really exposed this, you know, less than in me and I've got to lock this up. You know, I think the other big lesson I learned that was really valuable is understanding, you know, how trait, you know, how different things are built, like how things are built, how things are made, what the process of each part of a construction or a renovation project looks like, you know, what are the trades involved? What are, how long does it take? You know, you get a pretty good idea of time frame for things um, when you're doing TV because you, you, you've got to block it out very consciously. So I think that also helps with me understanding, you know, my time and being able to, you know, people ask you like, how much time do you think that'll take you to do that? And I have pretty confident answers for each of those things. Like mm. I'm happy to put together a construction schedule um, and look at a construction schedule and know if it's feasible or not, because I've been through so many now, like I know how long it should take. Um, so that was a really valuable experience. And also me being able to just dive in and help in areas if things are behind. Um, but also having that confidence that I know how furniture is made. I know I'm more confident in making something and having something built because I've watched the process oh. um, and I've, and I've asked the questions and like, why are you using this? Why are you not using this and understanding, you know, maybe what's the best way to go about something um, and, and asking the questions in order to, to know um, how to go about it in the future. Okay. Okay. I love it. Now the thing is that, We mentioned how nobody's getting rich by being on a design TV show, right? (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Okay. Um, What, so it's, it's a lot of stress. Uh, There's, I'm sure if you're, if you're a high type A person who can thrive in a stressful environment, I don't know anybody in this room. Do you, I mean, between me and you right now, (laughs) 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 you know, what I'm going to say is you are sort of a little fun for that. Like if you can survive and and thrive in that environment, there's juice in that. I, I all day long, I don't want to be there, you know, 12, 15 hours a day. But (laughs) if I were in a calm setting five days a week, like I would just like, okay, we can't do this. I'm not, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. Right. So, but, so, but the point is if it's not just that, so we're not getting rich off of it. We are make, we are having some fun. There is a challenge. There's a sense of accomplishment about being able to, like you said, run a marathon and get it done in four days and create Mm -hmm. this out of nothing. But beyond that, have there, and of course we've talked about the lessons that it's taught you as a business person, but what about attracting business to your firm? Has that happened at all? Or is that just a, not really part of the equation, Luann? You think it is, but it's not going to be. Yeah. I think it also, it, you know, it, it has certainly impacted my, my business. It, it is really being on design stars what gave me the ability to, uh, the confidence and the ability to really kind of leave my normal nine to five job at, you know, the builder side and, and go off on my own and, um, have that confidence that I really, you know, this is what I love to do. I I loved being on design star and it was so fulfilling for me. I was like, this is it. And some of the people that watch that show are still some of my, my very best clients. Mm. And I still, I still get calls 
to this day, that was like eight years ago. I still mm. get calls to this day of people remembering me on Design Star and now they have a project and they were so excited to call because yeah. they remember watching me. And so that still boggles my mind. It's like, that was eight years ago. How do they remember that? <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's, it definitely it gives you the ability to, you know, legitimize yourself as a designer in your, in your, um, you know, wherever you are, whatever your region is. Right. Um, and I have a client in LA, I'm working on, you know, the fourth project with them. And that's because they saw me in design star. So, you know, it really, you, it opens doors. It definitely opens doors to new um, clients that you may never have reached out to or, or, or been able to get on your own. And it opens doors with, with brands that um, open up some options and, and things for partnerships because they, you know, they've seen your work. They, they like your personality. They know that you're a professional and that um, they've seen you, you know, finish some crazy tasks in a, in a little bit of time. They know you're capable <laughs> and it, it really just opens up those doors that, that you wouldn't have ordinarily. Okay. And then how was it in an intention? Was it an end? Okay. Was it an intentional thing to parlay Design star to Hotel Impossible to We're Moving In to Best Room Wins. I mean, or, mm -hmm. you know, tell me about that progression. Is it like, hey, I want some more of that and let me continue? Do you cast again? Or did is there contacts that you can just, you know, reach out to? Or, or how did that happen? So being on Design Star, I think what it did is kind of put me in a pool of designers that, um, we're experienced with TV now. Um, we know what the behind the scenes looks like. Um, and other networks would pull from that. So I think Hotel Impossible was also, I believe, a part of the Scripps network. So they pulled from us from HETV. And that's why I think Ann Rue is on there. And that's why they called, reached out to me. Mm. Um, and we Skyped. We, we talked about, you know, what is it? What does a Hotel Impossible episode look like? And I'm sure Ann would say this too, but you know, we have a full week to renovate on Odell Impossible with a full team of help. And we're like, Oh, well that sounds like cake. Like, what do you mean? Like, I don't, <laughs> After I don't design star, have that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, ordinarily people would be like, what you want us to renovate what in a week? And we're like, we have more than two days. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so, you know, I think they pulled from, uh, uh, you know, a pool of people that had experience in shorter time frames and seeing that we were capable of it. And that's what opened those doors. Um, and that's still one of my favorite shows that I've done to date because we got to travel around and I was really left, they left me to my creative freedom. And Anthony, who's the host is very, um, he's very, uh, letting, he wants to give you your creative freedom mm. um, because he understands he's good what he does. You're good at what you do. You know, you do you. And that was a great working relationship. And, and, and I know is still friends with Anthony as well. So we were able to really like go to a hotel and, and assess on our own what we thought that that hotel needed from an aesthetics point of view and really kind of put our vision to life all on our own without having to present or convince anyone of it. Um, and so, yeah. so there, what, I guess there's a difference, right? So one show has that more, it sounds like it's almost a lit, the next level up. I don't know if the shows yeah. are considered next level up. I'm just saying, but the experience of creating the show, to your point, has more time, more latitude, more trust. No, it doesn't seem like it, they're trying to you know, put their foot out and trip you on the way. It's mm -hmm. not about you failing, right? And so right. is it that, that, to your point, that a show that has that a little bit a different um, point of view or focus on it, they're not going to maybe necessarily do so much open casting or maybe they don't do it at all. They're looking to people that have proven some chops. Yeah. On the more established shows, I think they're definitely looking at people that have, have experience. Mm -hmm. And, and because again, in a production from the production side, like they need someone they know they can count on to mm -hmm. get the job done. Mm -hmm. They don't have, you know, on design star, it's, it's great TV when you don't finish <laughs> on an, on an established show. It's, it's not, it it's costs, a whole them, different it costs them a lot of money. Yeah. Yes. So I think they do pull from their pool of people that have experience and all of the shows that I've been on, I, they've reached out to me and I've, you know, interviewed via Skype for those shows. And that's kind of where it came from. It's not something I've ever really s sought out on my own. Okay. Um, it's one of those things that just kind of presented itself. And I'm going to ask the craziest question that everybody's going to be like, seriously, Luann, is Design Star still on TV? 
No, it's oh, not. It kind, of, it, it kind of died when all the other design shows died on, on HGTV and they moved towards a, a more renovation based. Oh, well, I think this... it is coming back though. You know, I think there's a resurgence in design shows like Nate and Jeremiah's show is, yes. is back. It's not on HGTV, but you know, that's back. And then, you know, now there's some new Orlando Soria has a, has a new show on HGTV yeah. where it's, it's design focused and, and that's exciting because I think you know, it reaches a different audience. Like people, I think we're sick of renovation shows that don't give realistic budgets and it's really hurt our industry mm. on, you know, setting expectations and from a budget and a time standpoint. Right, right, right. Okay. So then, cause I guess the reason I asked that is because it sounds like if you have an interest or desire to pursue this, you want to get in on one of those type shows that is that whole the corral of eight ten designers whatever it is where they really are going to push your limits and then be able to prove and show yourself as a designer and as a business person and as a person who handles pressure but right. you, you know you're not going to apply so what would be the shows that are like that now i don't do you know what they are like you know, I don't know what, what competition shows are out there. Mm. You know, I think there may be more design competition shows that are back because now Best Room Wins is back and that's, it's kind of come back where Design Star was probably one of the last ones like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, getting on to, if you're, uh, you know, an up and coming or a budding designer that wants to kind of see what you're made of, I would definitely say try out a, a competition show and, mm-hmm. and, test your chops and see what, what you can handle and what, what you can do. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to get a thousand DMS and go, Luann, here's all the design <laughs> shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, with the understanding though, that, you know, if you're not someone that thinks running a marathon sounds like a really fun challenge, right. <laughs> that you probably shouldn't, that it's not for you. Right. Right. And l- let me ask you another question. You completely have no idea if you have any base of knowledge to answer it or not. But, you know, I feel like I uh, randomly will be aware of a designer who will think that they want to put together their own show, pitch mm-hmm. it, do it. Now, Orlando was on my show and he mm-hmm. did, he did say right on that, he was like, something's in the works. I can't say it because it's not definite. And we're all so mm-hmm. happy that he got it, but that wasn't his first show. So he was with right. Emer- Emily Hand- Henderson. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, right. but if you're unknown, like you now, you might be able to be in a position where if that was really your calling and, and you've shared with me that you have, you want to keep your interior design firm. But if mm-hmm. it was really like, Hey, heck, the interior design for the real person. I want to be a TV designer. You probably could pitch to a producer and have sort of a rough idea of the of the pilot and blah, blah, blah. But do you feel like that's a legitimate way for an unknown, unproven designer? And I don't mean unproven talent-wise in their own world doing business, but unproven to the TV world to do, or that's probably not likely based on the the, the inside information that you do know? It's just such a, it's such a hard world to crack into. Um, and it's, and if you're going to do it, I think it's important for you to have, you know, the big picture on what is it that you want out of it? Like, is it because you just want to have a TV show to be, you know, to say you've had a TV show? Um, is it something, is, are you hoping to make really good money from it? Cause that's not going to happen from your first season. Mm. Um, it won't lead to anything big unless, you know, you've really got the plan in place, um, behind you to, to really market it yourself, Mm. uh, and parlay it into something different. But, you know, I think a lot of people think it's kind of a quick, great way to make money and, you know, be the, the next big thing. But it's such a, it's such a long shot that you've got to have the understanding and come up with a plan all on your own of what, what it's going to do for you. Mm. I, I, it's good advice because I, I feel like I remember Ann saying something also is if you have to know why you're doing it. And mm-hmm. if you do know why you're doing it, then you can create the business plan around why you're doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I know we also had, um, it was, it's reminding me of the conversation I had with Amanda Berlin on the episode and she's a PR consultant. And of course we're so accustomed to PR consultants, 
and rightfully so. This is the, the typical business model is we're going to have a conversation. We're going to decide that we're going to give this at minimum six months, if not a year. And you're going to be on, you know, I'm going to be on retainer. Or you're going to have a contract for X amount of dollars per month. Um, but Amanda actually is a PR consultant who will work with you on a one-off basis. And so it occurs to me that if I were to have an opportunity, whether I was able to, you know, make the cut in all the casting calls and make the cut for a design competition show or whatever it might be, that would be a strategy, right? Even though mm -hmm. I'm not with a budget for $20,000 a year for a PR consultant for the full-blown service, it's just, okay, what do I want to make happen from this? And, and to your point, I might simply want to create a really big name in my small pond jumping off of this opportunity to be in, even in a single season of a show. Or I might want to create a, you know, a platform that launches me nationally. But the PR is completely different for that. And the plan, the business plan that goes along with that is completely different. So I like your idea where you just said, know what you want from it first. Right. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It's a big time commitment. Like it, you know, you're gone for weeks or, or so at a time and you're on set for 14 hours a day. Like there's no like juggling your design business and this show. Like it's, it, everything else is on hold while right. you're filming. So right. it's, it's one of those that requires a dedication of time. And so unless you have a clear idea of what, what it is you want out of it, it's, you know, I, I it wonder could be a big why waste sometimes. of time. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and that's the other thing. You have to sit and you have to either have the built-in team behind you to manage things, you know, at an excellent level for the week or 10 days that you're out the door, or you have to have some heart-to-heart -heart conversations with any clients that are in the pipeline. You mm -hmm. know, I have this opportunity and your project's going to be on hold while I go do this, you know, but when I come back, I'll be a movie star. Yeah, you'll have a designer who's a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, don't get me wrong, it is it is a great way to be, to launch yourself into being, you know, a big fish in a small pond. I think sure. that's the, you know, that's what's been for me. Like it gave me a leg up into the competition of designers in Arizona. And mm. it's, it's definitely helped me stand out and, and give them and legitimize my business. Mm -hmm. um, but some other people, like if they're okay with that, you know, just that, then great. But if they're just trying to make, make it big in TV, like, we need, it needs to be more of a real conversation about, you know, let's, let's be a little more realistic with what this can be for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's, you know what? It, I love it. It's the know why you're doing it. What's your why? And if you get clear on your why, and the thing is, even if your goal is to become a TV star, if you know that's your goal, then everything you do connected with doing it supports that. So maybe you mm -hmm. are taking on 12 month and 13 and 15 month renovation projects and build up projects while you're doing this because that's opposite your your goal so mm -hmm. it's it's just going into it clearly and having that uh, it's having the business plan i don't care if you're opening in a bakery an interior design store or your design firm or you're trying to launch a tv career you have to have a business plan how is it going to happen who are all the people that i need to support me what are the decisions that are going to be my barometer for this is a yes this is a no you know all day long right it's it's right. do i do this do i not do that it's the same same with me you know with opportunities that come is this going to support my mission is this just something i want to do for fun is this just going to make me feel good or is it going to move the needle you know you have to make these clear evaluations because lots of fun things come from everything you do but it has to support your why yeah, you have to be, you have to be mindful of where you're putting your energy. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So any last final thoughts that you want to share on this hindsight journey or where you're going and what some of the things are that you have built up from it? Or wh what do you want to say about that, Brittany? Yeah, I guess, um, as far as TV goes, like, a, I'm, obviously always open to, you know, whatever TV show may be up next if someone was to reach out. But for me, my goal is, is to ultimately have, um, do what I love, which is create custom furniture and textiles and things. And that's, um, a door that has recently opened due to, you know, Bravo and being on that, um, show. And, and that's what I wanted out of my TV career is just opening those doors and, um, being able to create something on a big picture level and, and make money while I sleep. Nice. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And it's just been my way of marketing without, you know, I, 
not setting aside like a, a necessary like fi- you know financial investment towards marketing like tv has been the marketing for me in my business and and that's what i've kind of used to help get my name out there and and, and get on panels in vegas and and do different things um to have a different perspective so um it's been a great experience and it's it's something i do enjoy cuz it's again like running a marathon i love a good challenge <laughs> <laughs> i've uh, done one i'm done with those <laughs> i know right i did a half i've not done the full yeah i did i did a half too and that was that was long enough <laughs> yeah 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 i just i when i was younger i intended and then i didn't do the half until i was already in my early 50s and i was like this is good i'm good with this <laughs> right, right. That's, i did it and that's good. That's it. That's it. So, well, this has been great getting to know you better, Brittany. We had a quick, you know, little hug and a, and a meeting in Las Vegas, but I'm so happy to get to know more about your business and your career and your journey. And you're just adorable and delightful. And I love your energy and I love the the clarity that you have surrounding these experiences that you have and that you're able to really use them, leverage them to the things that support what you want to do, which is what you said is to to run your design firm and to now branch out, I guess, and create custom furniture and things, right? Exactly. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Yeah, this was fun. I'm so glad we were able to, to connect and um, hopefully we'll run into each other again. Absolutely. Not exactly a cakewalk being on and design TV show, is it? Mm -mm. Brittany said, you must be good under pressure. I mean, in fact, actually what she said was you should be a person who can thrive in stressful situations. Two very different things, being able to survive, but the other is to thrive in a stressful situation. And she also said that you need to be resourceful. All right. But what did she learn and what did she transfer to her interior design firm from this experience? She decided, she spoke about how she learns to focus on the task at hand, right? Not getting down rabbit holes when specifying a coffee table, not chasing things that are not pertinent to what her task at hand is in. She also says she handles the pressure in running a business better because of the TV experience. And she also said that she understands and has learned to estimate the time it takes to complete the various portions of a design project much better. These are all great lessons that help her run her business more efficiently and ultimately more profitably, right? Now, the other thing that I wanted to just take a few minutes on is to just really point out how amazing our interior design world is here, right? About the community that we have here and how much I'm enjoying learning about all of the collaborations that are going on between you. You heard how Brittany, Jenny Slingerland, and Lexi Westergaard have become confidants, supports for each other, right? I want to remind you that this is happening all the time. And we have so many excellent examples of it here on the show that when I was thinking about it, I thought I just wanted to jot down a list off the top of my head of the designers that have been on this show and that have shared these types of relationships that they have cultivated over the years, okay? Now, I know that there are dozens more out there, okay? But these are just some of the few that have actually shared this experience on the podcast. So first, we have Ruthie Stalson, who told us how she met Cheryl Luckett at a conference and she ended up mentoring Cheryl, right? And then Rashida Gray heard about Cheryl Luckett and approached her and asked her if she would mentor her. And Cheryl said, yes. Then Deneen Jackson heard about Rashida's story and reached out and asked her to mentor her. So Deneen and Rashida just introduced themselves to me that's this last October 2019 at High Point Market to tell me that little tidbit. Okay, so I was so excited to learn that. And then also, Jenny, that we were just talking about, Amber Roy, who was on the show this past summer, met Jenny at Las Vegas Market through me, and they started a relationship, and now Jenny is helping Amber navigate her first year in the interior design business. And then we can go back to Christy Liu and Darcy Heather and Lisa Escobar and Jess Cooney, who 
Lisa and Darcy and Christy all shared how they met at a conference and then Jess invited all of them for a weekend retreat at her home for a brainstorming business building session and how they have remained friends. And there's also another. We have Paula Kinney in there who met Christy at a conference and then met her again at another conference and they remain friends. Okay. And then also Sarah Brennan and Natasha Jones who met at High Point almost two years ago and they continue to call each other and support each other. And then most recently, we have Christina Bruce, who was here on the show just a few episodes ago, and she shared how she met Kat French at Luann Live, and that ever since then, they actually talk every single week, helping each other with their business. And I also have my friends Michael Mariotti and Lauren Hurlbrink, who met at a Power Talk Friday event in High Point that we had, and they became fast friends, and then they attended Luann Live together, and a year or later, they're still in contact helping each other. All right. So these are some amazing friendships that have developed. But how did they happen? Well, each of these interior designers left their studio. They left their box. They went to a conference or a furniture market or a presentation at a design center. And then They didn't just attend it. They went with an open mind and they laughed and they shared and they looked at somebody else's eyes and invited that conversation in, right? It takes more than being there. First, you got to go. That's a big step. But then the next step is to being open and looking for that moment that you can share with somebody and being open to the conversation that could happen afterwards, all right? Being an entrepreneur is hard. It is a unique calling, and if you are called to it, I'm telling you, you must equip yourself with every advantage you can, and that includes a support system, okay? That means giving of yourself, your time, your experience freely, without reservation, because when you do that, it comes back to you, all right? Now, If you are ready to grow, to grow as a person, to grow as a business owner, to grow as a designer, look to how and where you will expand your circle, your relationships. I hope that sometimes you will look to do that with me. I hope you will attend the events that I speak at. I hope you'll think about joining me for my Power Talk Friday tours that I host. And of course, I hope that you will think about joining me at Luann Live. It's about the conversation next November 2020. Because I want to meet you and I want to help you find your designer bestie who can be your support, your voice of reason, your cheerleader. Nothing gives me greater pleasure than to connect people who I believe can enrich each other's lives. And I think if you are one of the people who have met me in real life, you would say that's a pretty factual statement, that I love to connect people, okay? I love to help you make your business journey a little bit easier, all right? I want I want you to find that friend who will have your back in the happy times and the trying times and for you to be that friend to someone else. That's a powerful feeling also to know that you've helped somebody share a win, right? Just be the cheerleader for them, right? Or to help them when they've got that client that is just really making them pull their hair out and they just need that voice of clarity to get through it, okay? The days of competing with each other are over. There is always enough for everyone, I know that to be true, okay? I want you to know it to be true too. So I hope that you'll think about joining me next November and see who you might meet that you can create this relationship with. It's possible because I have a front row seat to watching it happen every day. And it's just so exciting. So if you want to be notified when registration opens for Luann Live, it's about the conversation, November 2020, go to luannlive.com. Okay, this is the email list that is going to get notified when we open registration, luannlive.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want you to know that I value and appreciate that you show up for me. You can count on that. I truly, truly thank you for that. Decide to be excellent. 
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.